Alex from Stratified Automotive here and today we're going to go over a dyno plot and see some of its features. So first of all, this is how your dyno plot looks like when you get a printout from the dyno. Uh, on the bottom you have your engine speed and RPM and on the sides you have your torque and, and power numbers. Um, so first of all, when you strap your car down on a dyno, uh, the dyno actually measures the force that your car applies to accelerate those large drums that are underneath the dyno. So your dyno is always measuring torque and from there it is calculating the horsepower. And it's something important to keep in mind. The horsepower when it's calculated, it's calculated using the formula of torque multiplied by engine speed and divided by 5252. And this is why on all the dyno plots you see that the horsepower curve and the torque curves uh, cross at 5252. On this plot right here, uh, we have the red curve, which is representing a, a torque curve, and then the horsepower, which is, uh, which is uh, in blue. So the first section of the, um, the dyno plot shows your response. This is where your turbo is spooling and your engine is coming up to, spool, uh, to speed. What you want is you want uh, something that responds as quickly as possible, a turbo that spools up as quickly as possible, and it helps bring torque to its peak uh, area where it flattens out as quickly as possible or as early in the RPM band as possible. A small turbo and turbocharged cars will achieve this much better than a larger turbo. However, a larger turbo will always benefit the top end, and we'll get to that in a second. After your turbo has spooled or your engine has come up to speed in normally aspirated uh, conditions, you'll see that your torque curve will flatten out. You want this torque curve to be flat for as long as possible. A flat torque curve means that when you step on that accelerator, you always get the same predictable response because your engine is producing the same amount of force to move you forward. So you want the flat torque curve and if your torque curve stays flat all the way to red line, which is ideal, your uh, power curve, your horsepower curve will continue climbing as a straight line all the way to red line and you'll make peak horsepower at red line. That is the ideal scenario. However, there are always compromises. A small turbo that favors the low end will unfortunately become inefficient up top and you'll see the torque curve start to fall off. Um, on the flip side, if you have a very large turbo, it'll be slow to build up torque, so it won't be very responsive, especially driving around town, but once it does, it'll maintain a flat torque curve, and you're going to have usually a, quite a high heart horsepower number. So depending on what your car is, is set up for, whether you want to drive it on the, in the city or on a small track, or whether you're driving the car in drag races or on a big track, you want to shift this torque curve uh, around to best suit how the car is being used. The most important thing, however, to keep in mind is that you want to maximize this area underneath the, uh, the torque curve. This gives you a very satisfying, powerful, and responsive car all the time. So choose your parts wisely and, uh, and set up your tune appropriately to maximize this. Hopefully this sheds a little bit more light on what a dyno looks like and what we can gather from it. And uh, thanks for watching.